Okay, so after the uh, fun and games of doing the consumer unit, we're back here now and to do the second fix here. So, cables all run down into the tube. As you can see, there it is, the 4mm. We've got two 2.5s going down from the... Effectively, it's a fuse spur, because this which is a 20 amp fuse spurs. That's the fridge freezer marked up, that's the tumble dryer marked up. And down here, the two cables coming out the bottom. Now, whoops, yeah. these are the things we're going to be using, which are from MK. So the modular switches, modular plates, um, I'll take that one out of there because you actually can't get to these screws. <laughs> so you've got to run the cable into this, fit this up, then fit it into the plate, and then fit it, whoops, then fit it to the wall. So we've got that, and somewhere floating around, I've got the new tumble dryer switch, which will go in there. <coughs> Sorry. In there. Now, on this one, my original plan was, was to get a unswitched double socket. Came up with a problem there though. Those sockets only have one set of connections, so regardless of which switch you switch here, both double sockets would go live. So, the solution that I've come up with, if you just bear with me and I'll just grab them, are these. These are from NAP, but they're made by loads of manufacturers. This is a, a socket module. They've got two of those. There's the other, there's the other one. There's the faceplate. And those two modules clip into there. They're independently powered. And that will do the job. So what I'll do is I'll label those up um, to do that. Obviously the other one's not a problem. That's just a single uh, socket. So I'll start getting these wired up. Unfortunately, <laughs> I forgot the battery for my, cam my main camera, so I'm using my mobile for this, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but yes, we'll get those done, and then we're going to do the, and then we'll do the dead tests uh, all the way through. Uh, and the, once we've done that, that comes off the wall. Those two on the ring go back up into the loft, and I will get those sorted out. And we'll come to those later. Right, so. Basically, here's your socket front. Oh, sorry. There's your front that goes in. Here's your socket. Normal connections on the back. And all that does is it just clips in from the front to the back. Like that. Give me a second. It does go in, because I've done it before. I've had it now. There. Okay, that's one. Back, here's the second one. And done. And there it is. Oops, there we go. And there we are. And there are the connections on the back. And that just goes straight onto that back box. Like I say, put a couple of labels on the bottom there. And that's the solution. Might not be the most elegant solution for plugs that are visible, but plugs that aren't going to be visible, like we're doing here for these fridge freezers and tumble dryer, they're not going to be seen. I think that's a really neat, really nice solution. Yeah, so we'll get that on, get that all wired up, and we'll get that on. Ah, procedure for these, the MK ones, so that's the module you will get, and you'll get, you have to buy this separately, and that, that is what connects onto the back box and then there's a front that comes on so that goes on that way onto the so onto the uh, back box and then those two screws are the ones that line up uh, with the front so, so those, like I say those screws go onto the back box those two screws go to the front that's your module now before you can fit the module into here as I just mentioned there's where the screws are, and they this this plate here interferes with those screws. So the best way I can see of doing it is get this fitted up. So it's like a normal fuse spur. So you've got your supply and your load. As you can see, this is an earth, so you've got to get your earth through. There's an earth bar, there's an earth there, an earth on the back box, so you can do all that. Um, so get your, get your cables in first, get them screwed in, and then. It clips from the front to the back, just like the other ones I've just shown you. Clips in, same with the one next to it. So this is a two module, and you can get fours as well for double bank, uh, for double uh, back boxes and so on. 
So that's how that all goes together. So we'll get that all done and then we'll show you how it looks. So that's how it looks now that it's on. You can see all the wiring's in there, down there. And it's always got the fly lead from the back box. That's been done. So that screws on onto the front of that. <laughs> oh look, that's not good is it? That says top. Does it really matter? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about that. Right, so we'll get that on. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem to be honest with you. I know it says top but it, that doesn't really matter. So let's get that on and then uh, we'll see how it looks. So that's how it looks, the finished front. Obviously that front will come off. That front will come off uh, when the plaster ball comes on, so we'll just need to take that off when that happens, but we don't need to at the moment, so that's fine. That's just not on there properly there. There we go, just now. It's all clipped into place. Yeah. So I think before I go any further today, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the, the tests. I'll well, get those out of the way and done before I finish uh, carry on. So we've stripped the end of this cable, which is the four mil cable going to the new radial. Um, so I'm going to Connect these up, connect the earth and the line together, and then uh, we'll do the continuity test uh, at the other end. And then we'll do the, uh, the insulation resistance test, and then that, that just clears those out, out of the way. Um, I know I should do, there's a test I need to do once I've connected the switches up to make sure that the continuity goes all the way down to the sockets, but we'll do that. But they're not, the distance of that cable isn't going to really change the readings, it's just mainly to make sure that it all works before I power it all on. So I'm going to do these. These will, these will give me the readings I need. Um, now I've measured the distance of the cable because I've teed off in the loft. The actual distance to both sockets is exactly the same. So it won't matter which of those two sockets I'll be doing it from. Normally when you do a radio you could do it from the furthest point. But the way I've wired this up because I've teed it in the loft. The distance to both sockets is exactly the same so there's no point. It doesn't really matter which I do this test from. It'll be the same. So let's wire this up and then we're going to do the tests. Okay, so I've nailed the leads and let's see what the reading is. 0.22. Yeah, that should be about right. I'll double check those readings when I go home, but that should be right. As you can see, I'm going to be some new batteries in this, I can see. Right, so continuity line to earth, that's fine. We don't need to do the line to neutral, really. Okay, so as you can see, Got the fridge freezer and the tumble dryers those mounted in their bracket ready to go in little problem though the sockets on the back won't allow two four mil cables to go in and i've got to do that because you've got to get power from both these switches so you need to have a fly lead between the two so if you draw when bring the main supply cable into here then you would have run a fly lead from there to there so at least one of them will have two uh four mil cables in it and you can't do that so what I've come up with is this. So the main supply cable will come into this way go here for the line and the neutral from the supply will come into there. As you can see, I've then connected those neutral into neutral, line to line to both switches. They bend down quite nicely. Those are the supply cables going on there. Uh, sorry, those are the loads going down there, which are 2.5 mil cables. And because I've used a 35mm back box, just put that up against it, as you can see, there is plenty of room for that to work. Normally these are, that you're told to use 25mm back boxes on these. If I had it done, that would not have worked. So if you come across this problem, if you're running a 4mm radial and you're having to run these switches, get a 35mm back box and you should be able to do that kind of arrangement on the back. Just come through and how we're getting this all wired together because there's lots of wires in a very small box. I'm glad I've got a 35mm box now. So those are the supplies. That's the 4mm. These are the going down to the sockets. I've labelled them so I know which one's going where. And the massive earthing cables because of course you've got to earth this plate here and the back box. So I'll see how I've done this. So you've gone to that point there, and then I've done a fly lead up to that one, and then they've all come off that one, then I'm running all the, those back there somewhere. So now I'm going to try and get these all connected onto the front um, switches, which I've lost. 
Right, so there's, <clears throat> those are the switches, as I said, I've done those at the front, so they can go in that way. So I've got to get the the supply cables, these two, into these two Wagos, and then these load cables go into the bottom of that, and then hopefully this will go plonk into there. Yeah, right. Okay, so after much <laughs> mucking out with the cabling, we've finally got that in. I thoroughly recommend anyone doing this uses 35mm back boxes and not the 25mm, because you won't have the room. Anyway, so I've counted up the line and CPC in the cable at the other end near the board. And let's just switch that switch off. So, do that. Okay, so the fridge freezer will be on the left hand side socket. Fridge freezer. It's fine. I'll turn off the fridge freezer just to make sure. I'll turn on the tumble dryer. Nothing should happen. Yep, so that's good. So, let's move the sockets. Do the same test. There we go. Both switches are off. Test. Nothing happening. Tumble dryer switch. Yep. Come back up. And again, same test. Fridge freezer switch. Should do nothing at all. Excellent. So that, that's all tested and works all the way back. So I'm happy with that. So now we can do the other one. Okay, so this one a little bit simpler. We've only got one switch to put in here in a single socket. So not anywhere near as many cables to get into this. So we'll run the supply CPC to the back box. I'll then run a fly lead to the bracket and then I'll connect with a load cable, load cable CPC to that and that should give us earth continuity right the way through. Uh, let's see, not as many cables to get on this, so we should be alright with that. Okay, so there we go, so the dishwasher plate in the socket is on, that was reasonably straightforward. So we just need to get the uh, single socket on there, and then we can do the continuity test. Make sure that all works, and then we can deal with the consumer board. So, there we go, that's all I put into the socket, so I'll just get it on the wall. And then we can go from there. Get it on there and we'll test it. Okay, so here we are, we're at the board now. Um, I could do with tidying it up a bit. Um, I need to check with fuse box as to whether we, I can shorten those um, tails from the RCBOs, because if I can, that will make that, that will make that neater. Um, but uh, it, this section point is a bit of a going over. That one there I could do with do you know I me mean? doing something with them, just it, neatening it all up. I think it needs a just a good going over. Like I said last week, I was on the clock. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the the new radial in, which is going in on this one. Oh, uh, so it's that four mil cable. I'm probably going to bring down. Uh, I'm probably going to bring down this tube. Um, yeah, I'll probably bring it down that one. Um, and then get it into this. Because um, the house is obviously lived in, you know, I really am limited as to how long I can have the power off for. So um, it's kind of on and off a bit. So we'll do that. And because we've done all the dead tests um, to the circuits to the circuit so I just need to get it in and get it livened up now um, because now people might say well why are you livening it up when it's not finished in there well that's the the clients re is still building on the house and they've got to live in the kitchen and they, they need the uh, um, they're moving a dishwasher in soon um, so you know they've got to have it working um, it's not, not like you know when you're doing a house that's not occupied it's fairly easy to do all this um, but when you're dealing with a house that is occupied, you have to sort of go with the flow, so, much, so to speak. Anyway, we'll get this cable in, which is this one here, which is way, way too long, so I need to short that down before we do this. 
um, and then we'll go from there. So as you can see I've isolated the ring, um, we're decommissioning this temporary socket now so we're not going to do that. So we're going to join these two segments of the ring together and then we're just going to put them up in the loft because we have got more work to do here, if I just go around the corner there, there. We've got that to do yet, so I'm going to leave the length of those cables for the moment, just in case we need the length, um, and then we'll go from there. So I'll just uh, connect these up and then go from there. But what I'm going to use, I'm going to use that to connect them together. And I know you're going to think, how are you going to do that with these? The new two two ones from Wago, 32 amp. Let's just bring on some area. 32 amp inline connectors. So those will go into this. This is normally used for joining lighting circuits together. We're going to do this with those. Join those together with that. Okay, so there you go. That's using one of those lighting boxes. And away go. And the new inline connectors. And that's that ring all put back together again. We just need to test it.